Good day, thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. I'm Craig the Writer Stewart, and this is So Much to Say YouTube TV. These are my thoughts in my voice on black shit, white shit, gay shit, and everything in between. Now, So Much to Say YouTube TV is the place that you come to learn and grow. So go ahead and hit the like button, the share button, and the subscribe button. And turn on that little bell so that you get a notification every single time that I go live or I upload something new. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I had posted on my Instagram a couple days ago, um, Chrisette Michelle did a TED talk and um, she talked about being canceled. She talked about cancel culture and how she was canceled for performing at <sighs> the Trump inauguration. And she talked about how the black guy who performed, I don't remember his name, he wasn't canceled. In fact, his, his career continued to soar. He continued to sell albums and continued to tour. And it start, I started thinking about it today more, even though I posted this a couple days ago. I posted a snippet of her TED Talk. The entire thing is on her, is on YouTube. It's like 16 or 17 minutes long. But I started thinking about it today because I was talking to a friend of mine who actually sent the, the snippet to me. I said, you know, it's interesting because um, in her TED Talk, she talks about this idea of group think, group thought, and how so many people get on social media and don't have a thought of their own. They just go along with what everybody else is saying and thinking, what's going on. They go along with the conversation that is in the zeitgeist, right? And so, so um, she said, you know, there were people who canceled her just because that's what it felt like everybody else was doing but nobody spoke out really in defense of her. Now, you guys who have been watching me forever know that when they talked about canceling her, I was one of the few people. If you remember, I was like, no, I'm not canceling her. Now, I think it was a fucked up decision. I don't think that she should have she should have performed. And, but, you know, the, the decision is hers. You know, it's her art. She gets to decide where she takes it and shares it. You know, and I compared, if you remember, myself being an artist, you know, I don't write or create projects that I want that 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 the that the public tells me I should write and create. I write and create the things that I think you need to see and hear. I write and create the things that I think need to shift you, challenge you. Uh uh. Sliding over here, the things that need to that I think need to shift you or challenge you on what you think you know or what you think you believe. That's what an artist is. So at any rate, um, and if you and if you and if it challenges you in that way, then great. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. But I don't think that we should have canceled her because I think about the mental health aspect of it. Think about you logging on to social media and it feels like everyone around you is throwing stones at you and saying that you should die and this, that, and the third. And whatever it is that they say and saying that they're not gonna support you and they're not booking you, booking you for gigs or shows or concerts and they're no longer buying your album. What about the mental breakdown that can happen. What if that woman had, had broke down and committed suicide? What if that woman ended up strung out on drugs as a result of this? Um, what, what if she just had a mental breakdown and was never the same again after? Um, I think about that. And when I think about this idea that is out in the zeitgeist of protecting black women, which I believe in, but I think a lot of people, again, group thought, group thinking, say it, but don't really walk in it. Because if we're really talking about protecting black women, where was her protection? There were black people, men and women, who talked about canceling her. So are we only talking about protecting black women from physical violence? Are we only talking about protecting black women when it comes to the police department? Domestic violence? From a man beating her up in the street? Like, like. So we're not thinking about protecting a black woman's mental space. Is that what I'm hearing? 
We're not thinking about a black woman's emotional health, her emotional space. And see, it bleeds over into other aspects of that black woman's life. So uh, when you know one of your girlfriends, one of your coworkers, one of your female relatives is being mistreated, dogged out by a man that she thinks, maybe, maybe she thinks, maybe she knows, that she thinks is being faithful. And you know he's slinging dick all around the country all around the city, all around the neighborhood, and you're laughing and, and snickering behind this woman's back. She doesn't deserve protection. So, you know, when we think about stuff like that, when we talk about stuff like that, like how deep are we really going? Or is it just something to say? Or is it just popular thought? Is it just something to say to, to be a part of the conversation? And, you know, lately, and I've been writing about this, I don't know what's gonna happen with it, I don't know what I'm doing with it, but I was having a conversation with someone recently about this idea of mass delusion, where collectively, as a people, as humanity, we're delusional about some things. We pretend certain things don't bother us. Girl, why didn't you turn this corner? We pretend that certain things don't bother us or we pretend to be okay with certain things, but it really is mass delusion. As individuals, when we get in that quiet space by ourselves and we're thinking about those said things, it does bother us. But when we're around other people or when we're on social media where it feels like we're in company of other people, we pretend certain things don't bother us. But there are a lot of things that bother us because if it didn't, we wouldn't have people walking around suffering from anxiety and depression jumping off of buildings. You know, that's on the rise now in New York. And, and when, you, when you further delineate that, and when you look at subcultures like the black gay community, in particular black gay men, suicide. I was thinking about this this morning. Suicide seems to be rising. Off the top of my head, I can tell you three people, black gay men, that I may not have known personally, but have seen who have committed suicide. What is going on? It's like we're not really checking up on people and having the conversations that we need to have with each other. It's like we're going along, pretending like nothing bothers us, pretending to be happy, smiling, but not really saying the things that are really on our heart. And we're not really opening up with each other about the things that are bothering us. You got people that are addicted to, to prescription drugs and regular dr recreational drugs, street drugs. And it's like, what is really happening? And when I talk about, again, I'm still talking about gay men right now. And this is not, this behavior that I'm about to speak about is not specific to black gay men. But when we talk about anonymous sex and having sex with strangers and going online to look for strangers and, and going on Twitter and having unprotected sex and, and anonymous sex in hallways because you live in New York City or in the train stations or wherever. And there, there, there's, a, there's a crop of people who say, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. We're, there's, there's sexual freedom and that, okay, maybe it is for some, but I believe that there's a crop of people who are doing it because they're lost, because they're acting out They're trying to avoid what's happening in their life. They're trying to cope with something. But when we just discount it and say, oh, well, no, you know, we're just creating our own, our own um, path. You know, we're not trying to follow along with heteronormative um, this, that, and the third, you know, and, and it's just like, okay, I can rock with you, but those two things can exi exist at the same time. Yes, maybe some are, sexually free and liberated. But I, I'm willing to bet that there are some who are suffering and struggling and it's a cry for help. Just like suicide, an attempt could be a cry for help. And we just continue to ignore it. One of the best parts of life is when you can admit the truth to yourself about yourself. Cyberspace is a world where one can become something he isn't, but everything he dares to be. I wasn't interested in getting attached to anyone. 
and I knew I wouldn't take anyone I met online seriously. I had multiple screen names to increase my chances of meeting someone attractive. The majority of the profiles noted HIV negative under status, but I knew better from the work I had done in the HIV community. I knew one out of three black gay men was positive. The messages I found in my inbox validated me in my depression. In some strange way, they reinforced that I was worthy and deserving. My days consisted of waking up and logging on to see how many messages had accrued overnight. Months passed before I got honest with my therapist about what was happening with me. And before I knew it, I heard myself say, I've been having sex with people I meet online. To listen to more of Words Never Spoken in Memoir, visit audible.com. When I released my first book, I remember thinking very heavily about Elon Harris and how he did it, how he managed to reach millions of people around the world through his work and how I would do it. His readers became my readers. I write because it's my passion. I write with black people on my mind and black gay men in my heart. Toni Morrison gave me the courage to say that out loud. Yes, I can write about white people. White people can write about black people. Anything can happen in art. There are no boundaries there. I could write about anything, anyone, but I choose to write about our experience. And I've spent my entire writing life trying to make sure that the white gaze was not the dominant one in any of my books. Book of Jewels is my love letter to black people. It has nothing to do with who reads the books. Everyone, I hope, of any race, any gender, any country. Book of Jewels is 11 of the biggest life lessons that I've learned to date. And the stories behind those lessons. Book of Jewels is available now on Audible, all e-readers, and Amazon.com. Visit www.craigthewriterstewart.com for more information. I was involved briefly with a married man who believed he had the courage to leave his wife to be with me and to live his truth. This isn't the typical story of a married man promising to leave his wife for a secret lover. Rather, this is a story in part about a gay man who knew he was gay before he got married but chose to marry a woman because he didn't know how to break free. Rocky and I met on a gay social media site three months after I returned to the East Coast to live and just 11 months after he was married. At the time we met, he was living and working in Dubai as a contractor for the government on a military base, while his wife was stationed in Tallahassee, Florida, where they had a home. In one of the first messages he sent me, Rocky shared that he was married, but that he had regrets. He explained that he had come out to his mother and siblings when he was 18 years old. He said that To listen to more of One Thing for Certain, Two Things for Sure, a memoir continued, visit audible.com.